So in this video, I am uh, going to be talking specifically about growing in love, growing in, in loving others and loving others well. It's kind of, uh, uh, I couldn't really think of a specific title, but really I wanna focus in on uh, unconditionally loving others and being empowered to love others. Um, right now, as I'm recording the video, uh, this is Pentecost weekend. And so I wanna really talk about loving others well in the context of the holiday and the celebration of Pentecost. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is um, uh, Pentecost and the celebration of Pentecost and the significance of it. So most people that uh, are followers of Jesus are very familiar with the holidays, Christmas and Easter. Uh, and then there's somewhat, uh, to, the average person is somewhat aware of Pentecost, but uh, aren't fully aware of its significance and, and you know, really the, the importance of what happened uh, during uh, that time in the Bible. So I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about that. So the, the word Pentecost uh, really just means like 50, 50 days. And it comes from, and it, it, it's, it's based on the Jewish holiday, which is the, the second major Jewish holiday that they celebrate every year, the Feast of Weeks. And so from the, uh, the time of the Passover, which is the first celebration, they uh, then spend another uh, 49 or 50 days, uh, and then they, they have their next uh, feast and their next celebration, which is called the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot. And that is what we're celebrating right now is the Feast of Passover or the Feast of Shuvot. Now what happened uh, and the reason that the, the feast is celebrated in, in a Jewish context and also in, in the Christian context is because two very significant things happened during Pentecost. The first significant thing uh, that happened was the giving of the law. Exodus 19 and 20 details the giving of the law and Moses giving the Torah to the people of Israel and uh, just this pinnacle moment in the scripture where God gives his word to his people. And one of the interesting things that I've learned about the Feast of Weeks and the Jewish celebration of Pentecost is that uh, the, the, the primary things that they do to celebrate the, the festival is around food and they eat a lot of dairy and they also uh, have sweets and like honey as a part of their, uh, their celebration of, of this feast. And the reason that they have both of those is because they celebrate at this time the giving of the law. And, and there's two kind of illustrations in the food that they eat. They eat uh, the dairy and it, it, it kind of points to this, um, uh, this allegory of like a mother nursing a baby, the mother's milk, how it nourishes a child. And uh, it points to the reality that God's word is what nourishes us. And then the, the other side of it is, is a, lot, a lot of this feast and this holiday features like honey and things like that. And that's because the word of God is sweet to our soul. It's sweet to our taste. It's, it's something that's enjoyable and we need the word of God. So um, first of all, the first thing that happened during this, uh, this time in the scriptures was the giving of the law. The second thing that happened is in Acts chapter two, the giving of the spirit. And so you have the truth, the law of God, the word of God was given, and that's why we celebrate uh, the, the feast of Pentecost. But then also the spirit of God was given. You have the word and the spirit were both given. And ultimately uh, during this time, we celebrate the birth of the church within the Christian faith share uh, just a couple of scriptures out of John 13 and John 14 and really uh, bring the focus to growing in love, growing in love for others, growing in love for God. And honestly, like right now, um, as I'm recording this video, there's a lot going on in our country. Um, there's a lot of uh, really hard things that have been happening, you know, with the coronavirus, but also even with the, the senseless killings of African-American uh, men and women across our country, and really just the injustice that has been going on and uh, just the racial prejudice and all of these things, you know, that have been coming to the surface. And my heart has been grieved just in watching what's going on and watching the pain and watching the injustice and my heart longs to see justice fulfilled and, and transformation to come. 
And um, one of the things that has really been on my heart in light of everything that we're seeing happening in our country and around the world, God's really been redirecting me back to just the simplicity of love, the simplicity and the significance of love. And I think that what we need more than anything is, is um, true and authentic love for God and true and authentic love for others. And so that's a little bit uh, what I wanna talk about. And I think that this is a relevant message for now. And also this is a relevant message for, um, for any time in the future because love is always relevant. L love is always needed. I wanna look at uh, John 13, 34. Jesus is speaking to his disciples uh, before he goes to the cross. And he says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love, if you have love for one another. Those two verses are very significant and God's really been using these verses to speak to me in a lot of powerful ways. Um, but I, I wanna just point out a couple of things. So, you know, right now we're celebrating uh, the, the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Pentecost. And uh, for the Jews, it's significant. And also for the Christian church, it's very, very significant. Um, but in this, uh, he says, a new commandment I give to you. So the Feast of Weeks is the celebration of the giving of the Torah or the giving of the commandments. And, uh, and here, Jesus, he gives them a very simple but a powerful and even challenging commandment. And here's what he says, Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Now, I want us to just take a minute and think about uh, the significance of what Jesus said to his disciples and what he's saying to us today. The love that Jesus has for us and for people in general is an unconditional love. It's an unlimited love. There's, there's no way you could measure the vastness and the power of the love that's in the heart of Jesus for us. It's, it's, it's unimaginable, right? But Jesus says to his disciples, I want you to have that same measure of love in your heart for each other. And he goes on in verse 35 and he says, this is how people are gonna know that you're really following me. It's the way that you love each other. And he sets this really high standard. And it's something you see uh, all throughout the Gospels is when Jesus set a standard, he, uh, he never set low standards. He always set really, really high standards. And honestly, the standard of this new commandment to love each other as Jesus has loved us, is it, it's, it, it almost seems unattainable, unimaginable. How could we love each other the same way that Jesus has loved us? So I wanna continue looking at what, what he said because he continues the, the conversation in also chapter 14 and 15, 16 and 17. He continues uh, talking with them, but in, in chapter 14, he really gives us some keys that I believe will help us understand how do we really love others well. And again, I, I just wanna just say, relative to right now and everything that's going on in our country and our world, Right now, what we need more than ever is authentic and genuine love for others. And, um, and so I, I think that this is a key message in us discovering how we can love others well. In John 14, 21, Jesus said, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So uh, Jesus says that the way that you'll know if someone really loves Jesus is that they will keep his commandments. And if you go back to John 13, he says a new commandment I give to you is that you are to love each other. And, uh, and he says that if, if we will abide in his commandments and, and, and we will follow his commandments, uh, then, he, then those people will be loved by the Father and Jesus will reveal himself to those people. In verse 23 of John 14, Jesus, he also says this, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine, but my father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things 
and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So I really wanna focus uh, on verse 26. John 14, 26, Jesus says, guys, understand the helper's coming. The Holy Spirit that the Father will send in my name, he's gonna teach you everything and bring you remembrance to everything that I have said to you. Right now, we're celebrating the Feast of Weeks. We're celebrating the Pentecost, uh, um, the 50 days uh, that are after Passover where the Jews remember the giving of the law and, and those of the Christian faith not only celebrate that, but also celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit. And there's just something so significant about this holiday. And I believe that, that Pentecost is as significant as Easter, if not even more significant. And here's why. So Easter or Resurrection Weekend, we celebrate the fact that Jesus paid the price for our sin with his blood. And he paid with his blood for our forgiveness so that we would no longer have to pay the price for our own sin. He took on uh, that penalty for us so that we can be forgiven and so that we can inherit eternal life. And that is incredible. And that's something that we should celebrate. And I love celebrating Resurrection Week and I love celebrating Easter. But if we just stop with celebrating Easter and emphasizing the cross and even the resurrection of Jesus, but if we, if we don't truly celebrate the coming of the power of the Holy Spirit, as it says in Acts chapter two, the disciples were waiting if we don't look at that, then ultimately we miss out on the fullness of what God has for us. He, Jesus didn't come just so that we could be forgiven of our sins. Jesus came to forgive us of our sins, to give us eternal life, but also to make a way to where we could receive the power of the Holy Spirit upon our lives and we could live in a way that would never be possible otherwise. If you read through the gospels, you see the disciples lived one way before Acts chapter two, and then Acts chapter two on, they lived a totally different life. What was the main difference? It was the coming of the Holy Spirit. And when they received the power of the Holy Spirit, everything changed. So I wanna look back at the scriptures we just read, John 13 and 14. Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, love each other in the same way that I have loved you. And if you actually think about that, it's impossible for us to love people the same way that Jesus has loved us. How could we possibly do that? He goes on in, in John 14 and he says this, but wait, the helper, the Holy Spirit is coming and he's gonna teach you all things. In other words, he's gonna give you what you need. And so the incredible reality that we celebrate this weekend during Pentecost, the significance of Pentecost is this, is that the Holy Spirit came. And when the Holy Spirit came, he empowers us when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit through the blood of Jesus, through what he did on the cross. We receive that power. We also receive the power to love others well. We can abide and live by this commandment to love each other well when we're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. When we receive the Holy Spirit into our lives, we receive God into our lives. And the Bible says that God is love. So think about this. When we celebrate Pentecost, we celebrate the reality that God who is love himself by the spirit comes and engulfs and overwhelms our lives. In other words, he, he takes over, he baptizes us in himself. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we also receive the baptism of his love. And he changes our very nature and our desires and our ability. Uh, our abilities to love others. And I think that when we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, we're also given the grace and the ability to walk in the love of the Holy Spirit. And with that, I just wanna look at a couple more scriptures uh, just in closing. And I, I really wanna just share this, just to encourage you uh, to really love others well in this season. And in, in Galatians uh, chapter five, um, we're just gonna look at the... Um, Galatians chapter five, verse 22. Galatians five twenty two. the fruit of the spirit is love. It goes on and it talks about the rest of the fruit of the spirit. 
But the Apostle Paul makes it clear that the first evidence of the Holy Spirit working in our lives is that we love others well. And if we go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, when we go to that scripture, we can actually see uh, what love looks like. Love isn't just an idea. Love actually looks like something. And this gives us some details. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So with that scripture, I just want to close with, with a, couple of, a couple of points as we, as we look at Pentecost this weekend, as we celebrate the coming of the Word of God, the Torah, and also the coming of the Spirit. This is a significant holiday, and I just want to encourage you to rejoice in the giving of the Spirit, that God gave us His Spirit so that we could live a supernatural life filled with His love, filled with His joy, filled with His peace. And uh, there's just a couple of things that, that I wanna share. I believe that right now, love is actually what makes the church, the body of Christ, most essential and necessary in this hour. I know there's been a lot of talk on whether or not the church is essential. And here's what I wanna say. What makes us most essential right now is not the way that we gather, it's not our online events, um, it, it's not any of our, our uh, you know, coming together on Sunday mornings even. I think the most significant thing that's gonna make us essential right now for our nation, for our city, for the people that are around us is our love. Our love for one another, our love for God, and also our love for our nation and our cities. Um, and so if you wanna know what makes the church relevant, what makes the church essential, it's our love. And the amazing reality is whether or not our churches can meet on Sunday morning, like during a typical gathering or not, guess what Guess what can continue to happen? No matter what, whether or not we can meet on Sunday mornings, we can still love people. We can still love each other. We can still love our families. We can still love God. We can still love our neighbors as ourselves. And so what's amazing is whether or not the churches need to gather on a Sunday morning or not, I know there's a lot of debate about you know different ideas um, but guys, it's not our gatherings that make us essential. It's our love that makes us essential. The world doesn't need more gatherings or get togethers or clubs to belong to. There's plenty of that, okay? Um, the world needs authentic love and authentic love comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't love in the same way Jesus loved unless we've received the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no way we can do it. So right now, more than ever, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And this weekend, right now, we're celebrating Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit of God into our lives. And when the Holy Spirit comes in our lives, love itself comes into our lives. And when love comes into our lives, then we can authentically love each other, guys. We've got, we've got to have this love. And, uh, and you know what, right now, our, um, I, I think the reality of what I'm learning, what many people are learning, is that our ministries, our gatherings, our get-togethers, the way, the things that we've always done, they may not be quite as essential as we, as we really thought they were. But here's what I think we're also discovering as the body of Christ. Our love is essential, and it's, it's more essential, I believe, than ever, that we need to love each other. And that's what the world's looking for, is authentic love. The second thing about love that's powerful is love delivers our hearts from comparison, from striving, and bitterness. And I would, I would just encourage you this weekend as we celebrate Pentecost, as we celebrate the coming of the Spirit, that one of the fruits or the evidences of the Spirit of God coming into our lives, and as we celebrate it and even ask for more of the Holy Spirit, uh, His love should deliver our hearts from comparing ourselves to others. Love doesn't compare or strive against others. Uh, love really wants others to succeed and even for them to win. Love longs for their success and, and, and uh, for them to be able to, to reach their dreams. Um, uh, love gets rid of that heart of compar comparison and striving against others. And also love delivers us from bitterness. And I think right now, one thing that, that I would just encourage everyone is to guard your hearts above all else from bitterness. Um, you know, one of the... the um, the clear descriptions of the end times church in Matthew 24, Jesus describes that at the end of the age, that one of the things that's gonna happen is many people within the church, 
their love will grow cold and they'll actually turn away from the faith. Their love will grow cold. They'll be filled with envy and bitterness and malice and even hate one another. And that's one of the things that, that's coming is, is as we approach the return of the Lord, more and more people are gonna fall away from the faith. And the beginning of that falling away, it starts with losing our love for one another. We must guard our hearts in this hour right now. We have to guard our hearts from offense and we have to choose love, guys. It's, it's so significant. And if you've been struggling with comparison, if you've been struggling with striving or bitterness or anger or unforgiveness, I just wanna encourage you right now to give that to the Lord and to say, God, in place of bitterness, in place of unforgiveness, in place of comparison, give me unconditional love for that person. And what's amazing is by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go from being bitter or striving against someone to actually authentically loving them well. And I think right now more than ever, you know what our nation needs? Our nation needs authentic, unconditional love. And uh, one of the things that, that I love about 1 Corinthians, it, it, it really gives this depiction of love. It is not a, this thing that tries to, to dominate or control, but love is really something that listens well and is, is you know slow to speak, but quick to listen. And I just think that's what we need to be as a body of Christ right now. We need to be quick to listen and slow to speak and really show people authentic love. Also, the last thing that I wanna talk about in loving others well is, you know, love, the things that we do in love are actually the only things that will remain in eternity. So all of us are, are approaching death. Every single one of us that's alive now eventually will cross the finish line of this race of our lives and we'll go to the next life where, where we'll spend an eternity in heaven with the Lord. For those that are following Jesus, uh, the Bible says that they, they will not be judged for their sins, but there will be a judgment where Jesus will actually judge us for how we stewarded what he gave us. And he'll ask us on that day, how did you steward what I gave you? Did you steward it well? What did you do with it? And, and you see in the gospels, these, these um, illustrations or these stories that Jesus told, where basically in a moment, things that we built will be burned up like fire and will disappear uh, because they were done out of impure motives or they were done for the praise of men or the affirmation of others or, or for, for wrong motives. And ultimately, the only things that will remain in eternity are the things that are done out of pure love. And so I wanna be investing in eternal rewards. I wanna be investing in, in the, the life that is to come. And I wanna be thinking about the life that is to come because ultimately, you know, I might spend you know, 50 years or 80 years on this side of eternity, but on the other side of eternity, I'll spend billions and billions of years and so the, the weight of, of eternity with the Lord so far outweighs this life. One of the things God has been showing me is I just wanna give myself completely and solely to doing things out of a pure heart, a pure motive, and out of true love. Because I know that when I do things out of love, that those things, when they're tested and they're judged by the Lord, when I'm standing before him on that day, those things will remain and I will be rewarded for those things that were done out of love. We must do things out of love. And so this weekend, again, as we celebrate Pentecost, as we think about Pentecost, as we think about the giving of the law and the giving of the spirit, let's celebrate together the fact that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are empowered by him to do what Jesus has commanded us to do. And ultimately, what did Jesus command us to do? In John 13, he said this, my commandment that I give to you is love each other the same way that I loved you. That's a lofty commandment. That's, that's a really big ask that Jesus was giving to his disciples. But the amazing reality is that through the new covenant reality, through the blood of Jesus, we're, we're not striving to love others on our own but we have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to empower us to love others well. So I just wanna close right now with prayer and, uh, and I just wanna pray for you to encounter the power of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would come upon you and fill you with his love. Lord, I just thank you for each person that will watch this video. God, I just pray that you would bless them and strengthen them and fill them with Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that you came and you died on the cross and you removed all of our sin and all of our separation and you've brought us close to you 
through the torn veil that which, which was your flesh. We can enter into the most holy place of your presence, God. Thank you that we can enter into your presence. And thank you that through that veil, through the torn body, the torn flesh of Jesus, we can be forgiven and we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I just pray right now that you would fill us with Holy Spirit and that you would fill us with your love. In Jesus' name, amen.